In one corner, we have White Boots, founded in 1853 and a fixture of Spokane, Washington since the 1920s. We have Whites to thank for a lot of the work boot styles we enjoy today. They are made in the USA, and in 2014, Whites was sold to Lacrosse Footwear, which also owns Danner Boots, and Lacrosse Footwear is owned by Tokyo-based ABC Mart. In the other corner, we have Nick's Boots, a bit younger, being started in 1964, also offering some of the most hardcore boots available today, and also located in Spokane, Washington. As of this day, Nick's is still a privately owned company. Chances are, if you've ever searched for the most hardcore work boots that you can find, you found yourself looking at the crossroads of Nick's Boots and White's Boots. Now, there are other companies, of course, out there who make wonderful and hardcore work boots. These two tend to be the ones that I get the most questions about. What are the differences between them? Which one should I get? This is what I do. What do you think that I should buy? And the thing is, I actually own three pairs from each company. I've worn the Nick's longest, I bought the Builder Pro two years ago, now going on three years ago, and uh, I've worn them extensively. As a matter of fact, they're almost ready for a resole. The whites I've owned for about two years, and I've bought more products from each one because, I, first of all, I love the style. I love the idea of uh, Pacific Northwest boots and the build quality that you get. That being said, there are some differences here. But we really had to go much deeper than skin deep to find them. So if you're looking at this video saying, all right, I, I just give it to me straight. Which one should I buy? The truth is they're both excellent. They're both uh, on, on the same playing field without a doubt. They both surpass pretty much any mass produced boot that you can buy today. They're both great. And they both respect each other, which I found really endearing. When I was actually interviewing people from each of these companies in preparation for this video, they both respect what the other is doing. So it's pretty cool. And being from the same town in the same state, um, I think some of that, that camaraderie is really a good thing. Now, both of these brands are really the toughest of the tough. And when I say that, they serve some of the toughest people out there, woodland firefighters, um, people who are spending most of their days on their feet, myself included. And I've worn these things extensively in the summer, the winter, and uh, I really wouldn't trust my feet to anything else other than a, a boot of this quality. And it's really, really something that you have to experience for yourself in order to um, understand. The other thing is, I know they're expensive. I get that. And a lot of people are, are questioning where that money goes. And I, myself, before I bought my first pair, was saying the same thing. The thing is, is when you look at cost per wear, and especially the fact that you can rebuild these several times over after resoles and have them for 10, 20 more years, the cost per wear actually goes way down. And the fact that you can get them custom made from both companies means that you're going to have a boot that's basically the most comfortable work boot that you can get after you break it in. And uh, that is something that I really feel I need to mention in the beginning of this video because there are going to be plenty of people who say, what, why are these any better than my Red Wings? Well, they are, and I'll show you a little bit later on. We are going to be deconstructing a boot from each. That would be the Americana from the Knicks and the White's MP boot, which um, is basically legendary. We're going to be taking apart... I mean, cutting apart each one of these boots in order to really find out what makes them tick and the differences between them. The reason I chose these two models to cut apart is because they are very similar to each other. Same height. If you look at them, of course, you can get them customized, but basically the same height, cap toe, uh, a lot of similarities as far as their style goes. I know that these are the more casual line, but let's get into that a little bit later on. But if you're watching this video, you already know all this stuff. So let's talk about the differences between the two so I can give you some data points so you can make the best decision for yourself. First off, we have the boots themselves. As you can see here, both companies offer fire, work, and casual boots. NYX has their Hot Shot, their Builder Pro, their Falcon, and about a dozen other models. While White's, on the other hand, just about doubles Nick's selection with a much larger range of boots, including some Western and some dress models, along with a ladies version of the Packer boot and an extensive customization option. Now, of course, there's the individual models from each, which are very similar, particularly in their work line. In fact, these two boots, the Builder Pro and the Smoke Jumper, are very similar with the exception of the heel and the composite toe. Others are quite different, and if you have your heart set on a lace-to-toe model, unfortunately, NYX doesn't currently offer any. 
Both companies offer either hand-sewn or optional machine-sewn stitch-down construction at a lower price. Whether there is any noticeable difference is up for debate. I find the hand-sewn to feel a bit tighter and if you like the idea of a more traditional construction method, hand sewn is the way to go. But if you don't care about such things or if you're just looking to save a bit of cash, machine sewn is a viable option. Both brands offer the ability for customization, including the size and shape of the boot to suit your needs. The comfort and the support of a properly fitting boot is probably the most important factor in footwear and should not be overlooked. It's well worth the extra money to go custom. Now, my experience with Nicks and Whites has set the bar for boot construction quite high, so much so that my old Red Wings really do feel flimsy and light duty in comparison. My first pair ever was the Nicks Builder Pro, an absolute tank of a boot which redefined how good work boots can be. So there's definitely a part of me which has a soft spot for Nicks. My first pair of whites is this horsehide bounty hunter from Baker's. Now, while it's a good looking boot, there were some issues. There was glue left over on the midsole. The heel was ground so aggressively that the Vibram logo on the bottom was partially worn away. And I was a bit disappointed in the level of finishing for nearly $600. So next for me was the NYX Urban Logger, a little beast of a boot which I deemed at the time the perfect boot. Perfect because it could handle just about any situation and look good doing it. It was just at home on the trail as it was on the street and on the job site. And this was my go-to for pretty much all of 2019. Then the NYX Americana challenged one of my favorite models, the Iron Ranger from Red Wing. And in my eyes, it was a total KO. It was basically superior in every single way. The Americana turned up the volume to 11 on everything I loved about the Iron Ranger and converted me to a complete NYX fanboy. That was until I got the white smoke jumpers. Now this pair of whites was executed with such precision that I had to reevaluate my original stance on the brand. Nothing was out of place or sloppily built. These were on par with my NYX Builder Pros. And though they were different, they felt equally as durable and robust. So the picture became less clear, and what's a guy to do but order a third tiebreaker set of boots? And I had been eyeing the White's MP boots for a long time. These are pretty much legendary. They look incredible, yet I've never owned a pair of them. I've recommended them to people based on what I've heard, but never owned a pair for myself. So I bought a pair, and especially when I saw that they had a pair in um, number eight Chrome XL from Horween, I pulled the trigger. And these have been great. Now I got these with the half sole on them, which is a lot thinner than the, the same style sole in the full line here. And from what I've looked into and found out, this is actually a less durable option. So if you're looking for the half sole, again, these could be more of like a dressier kind of boot. Now these boots have actually worn very little, only a few times because they're basically brand new, but they've been great. The finishing on these is actually much better than on my, my bounty hunters. So I would say that at this point, I'm looking at both options and with everything that I have, I'm kind of more confused than I was to begin with. So what we're going to do is we're gonna look at the inside of each of these boots and we're gonna find out exactly what makes them tick. Like I mentioned, the ones that we're gonna be cutting apart are the White's MP and the Nyx Americana. These are a pair of boots that I they really deserve better and it pains me to do this, but uh, in the interest of science and really looking into these things past what I can see from the outside and, and providing you with a clear, uh, you know, difference between them. I don't see any other way. So um, let's get to it.
All right, guys, so here we have a pile of pieces from the carnage that ensued for each boot, and I think that we're going to start from our way uh, on the top, and then we're going to work our way down. That'll probably be the best method of going through these. The first thing that I noticed is that, and you can see this without cutting these apart, is that the Nick's tongue is actually gusseted all the way up, so um, getting dirt or debris into your boot is not going to be a problem because you have a gusseted tongue that goes all the way up to the collar of the boot. And this is something I really like. The other thing is whatever whatever leather that they use for the tongue is very, very soft to begin with. Really, really nice stuff. The whites, on the other hand, is not gusseted all the way up to the top. Now, again, this is just the their casual line of boots. I want to make sure that I, I mention that. Their work line seems to be built basically the same. With If there's any differences, I, I can't tell the difference. I know that white uses a step welt. Um, but you know, they're really very, very, very similar enough so that I would say it's a toss up, whichever one you like better. But the casual line is where the differences really start to come into play. So the tongue on the white's M and P, it only comes up about halfway and this leather, while it's soft, it's not as buttery soft as the tongue on the Nyx. So that's the first thing that I noticed. The other thing on the, on the upper that I noticed is that the, for some reason, the cap toe on the white's. The second row of stitching, the one that's closest to the toe, doesn't actually go through to the lower leather. It's just decorative. So we have one row of stitching, double stitching, along the, the outer edge of the toe cap. That's stitched to the bottom. The other one is uh, just decorative, which is kind of odd. Now, the opposite can be said for the, the Nyx. When I cut this one apart, the stitching for the toe both rows of stitching, both rows of double stitching go right through to the to the lower. So I would imagine that if you were actually going to use the MP in some sort of a work scenario or you're going to just beat them up or use them quite a bit, eventually you may have that cap toe hanging off there because the thread that's, that's used to stitch that is not very heavy duty. That was actually quite surprising when I saw that. Going down uh, a little bit further, a lot of things are very much the same on these two. They're They're Again, both very robust, and I, I can't mention enough that they really are built better than any mass-produced boot that I've ever seen. But one of the things that I always talk about is you can tell the like how, how structured a boot is if you really squeeze the heel. So if you pick up a boot that's in the store or something like that, if you give the heel a squeeze and it just collapses like a Doc Martens will, um, that's sometimes a telltale sign. What I noticed is that here's the leather that's that's in the heel of the the whites, it's thick. There's no doubt about it. It's, again, much thicker than anything you'll find off the shelf. Uh, it's also pretty pliable. But it pales in comparison to what I found in the Nyx, which is much, much stiffer by comparison. And actually, looking at them, um, the, the Nyx may have a slight thickness advantage, too. It looks like this heel section is thicker than the whites. But if you look at the whites, pretty um, flexible. The Nyx... Not nearly so much. It's definitely uh, stiffer. This thing feels a lot more structured. Now, going down a bit further, it looks like the footbed for the Nyx is a bit thicker. Again, we're really splitting hairs here. But one thing that I noticed is that the Nyx used a lot more nails to hold down their footbed. The Whites did use some, but um, by comparison, the, the Nyx had quite a few more. So... Uh, this this really did feel more like it was built like a work boot, whereas the whites felt like it was a little bit more built like a casual boot. In the end, what I learned about my deconstruction of both of these boots and their casual lines is it can be really summarized in this. The NYX casual line is built the same way as their work boots are. And as I mentioned earlier, I think that the work boots from either company are probably very, very comparable. But these seem like they're built the same way as their work boots. And even when I wear them, they feel the same way. They're stiff and um, and it takes a while to break them in. Once you do though, they're, they're a tank. They're excellent. Now that is evidenced by the, you know, like the double stitching here, uh, the four rows of stitching on the cap toe, the fact that all four rows go right through the, uh, the lower leather um, and the cap toe itself. Whereas the whites, one row is decorative. You go a little bit further down, the heel leather is thicker and stiffer. I think that it looks like overall the, the leather that's in the footbed looks like it may be a bit thicker in the Nyx, whereas in the whites is a little bit thinner. And when you look at the nails in the, the Nyx, there's about 75 in this pair, whereas there's about 50 in the whites. Um, 
it now that's not that's not necessarily a, a you know a good or a bad thing depending on how you want to wear these. If you like your boots to be extremely robust and um, you know basically like bulletproof, like little tanks, then this is the way you want to go. Let's not forget though that Whites is building their boots, their casual line for people who may like the look but don't necessarily need the build of their work line. So they went with a slightly less heavy duty option in a lot of things, and that being you know that. Only one row is stitched up here because most people may not be spending time where they're going to be wearing through the toe. Um, the thinner leathers, the, the, the overall less robust build quality of these boots, it actually makes for a more flexible boot, something that may be a little bit easier, especially if you're somebody who's not coming from the work line and somebody who just looks for comfort and style, then it looks like the whites are really more aimed toward that market. And I think that... That's something that is going to really come down to who's actually wearing these. The other thing that I found out is that the half soles that are on the White's MP, the Sherman, I believe it is, that I bought, um, those are actually a lighter duty version than the, the regular mini lug soles that go through the entire heel. I like it because it's only on the toe. I like the looks of it. Come to find out, though, that's more of a dressy uh, style um, sole, and that's actually going to wear down a little bit faster. That option itself is not even available with NYX. So that's my takeaway. If you like your boots to be like your work boots, even when they're casually worn, NYX is the company for you. If you want a more accessible, more um, comfortable as far as breaking it in uh, boot with a little bit less robust build quality, then Whites is your company. Now that's, again, we're really splitting hairs here. Even the Whites dress line, I would argue, is more robust than most Red Wing boots. You know, everything here is still very heavy duty, very well built. Uh, so keep that in mind. I hope that this has been informative. It was very eye-opening for me. I feel bad that both these boots had to lose their functionality, but I hope that the value get you get out of this video was worth the, um, <laughs> the destruction of both of these. And uh, hopefully that answers the question, which one should I buy, Nick's or White's? Hate to say it, but the answer is, that all depends. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it, as always, and I'll catch you next time.